So good morning, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 20 Live today. It's Saturday, August the 17th, 2013. Our topic today is teaching and listening tools and apps, and we're very fortunate to have our special guest, Shelly Carroll. Kim is not able to be with us today, but we always send a, a shout out to Lori Moffat, one of our backup uh, moderators, and uh, Tammy Moore, who faithfully provides uh, closed captioning to for today's show. So thank you very much, Lori and Tammy and Shelley for being with us. And you see all that crazy typing going on and all those wonderful things being shared. It's, of course, Peggy George who's uh, doing a great job in uh, supporting our show. So everybody should be hearing audio. And I'm talking, so I just want to make sure that that's OK for everybody. Just want to give me a smiley face that, yes, you're good. OK. Good. So if anyone does have any problems, you know how to run the audio setup wizard. I'm going to buzz by through the next few slides because I think most of you have been with us today. There's our wonderful faces. Um, a reminder that the Classroom 2.0 live, live Binder is ready for you to, for all the resources today. But in addition to that one, I want to remind you that, uh, or tell you, that Shelly has a, um, just let me make sure I say, it, I say the right thing, a pearl tree. Uh, of her slides available as well, and you're going to find a link to that in the live binder. Uh, all our resources there at live.classroom20.com and the archives and resources page. And I know how you, I know you all know how to access that information. So world map, everybody, and let's see where we are located in the world. So it's on the left hand side of the whiteboard. The second tool down, the little starburst. Hold on to it and drop it on the map, and we'll know where you are. Because I know, I think Shambles is here. He's one of our farther east, or we could say we're west and he's east. He's in Thailand. And if you can't make that map, will the icon work with the starburst? Just type in the chat to let us know where you are located. As Peggy said earlier, it is really nice to get a sense of uh, respect from the people who are with us today. And we thank you very much for sharing your Saturday with us. We put you to work, and I'm assuming you know where that uh, polling tool is, just under your name on the right-hand side. And you're going to answer our first poll question today, and, is, and that is, do you use listening tools in your classes? So go ahead and vote yes that you do, or no that you don't. I'm just going to publish the uh, results. Let's see, give an idea what people are doing. So quickly, we have a large number of people who are actually using listening tools, and we'll be looking forward to having you share how you do that. Just let me clear the votes, and we're going to go to our second poll question, and that is, have you used listening tools to get audio feedback from learners? So yes, if you have, and no, if you had. So go ahead and vote, please. publishing the results for you too. Uh, more people are not doing that. So Shelly, take note of that, and you'll be able to uh, give them some assist as we go through the show. I'm going to clear the votes again and go to our next poll question, which is, do you plan to do a podcasting project with your students this year? Yes, if you are, and no, if you are not planning to do one. And there we have the re results for uh, planning. We've got more people planning than not, and some of you not able to use the polling option for us. So thanks very much for uh, participating just now. And I'm now going to formally introduce Shelley Terrell t to us. And she's going to get a newbie question in just a second. But I think you really need to hear something about uh, Shelley's background, because she has a tremendous amount of experience, and I think we sh are um, most fortunate that she's with us today. And I do want you to hear um, her, her background. She's an education thought provoker, teacher trainer, author, and international speaker. She's the host of American Peaceful Free Friday webinars and the social media community manager for Consultants E. She has co-founded and organized the acclaimed educational projects. EdChat, the Elton Nominated ELT Chat, the Reform Symposium E-Conference, and the Elton Nominated Virtual Roundtable Language and Technology Conference. 
Her prolific presence in the educator community through social media has been recognized by several notable entities such as the New York Times and Microsoft's Heroes for Education. She's also traveled to over 15 countries worldwide to train teachers and consult with organizations as UNESCO, Bangkok, the European Union Al Planet, Project Cultural Iglesia of Brazil, the British Council in Tel Aviv, IATEFL Slovenia, HUPE Croatia, and the British Council in South Asia. You can visit her education blog, Teacher Reboot Camp, to find free resources about the effective integration of technology with learners. Keep an eye out for her book, The 30 Goals Challenge for Educators, published in Iron Education. She participates with nearly 10,000 other educators worldwide in the online completion of these goals. So you can find her on Twitter at Shelly at Shell Terrell, without the Y. I just want to make check sure that's correct, Shelly. You are welcome to take over. Pan Pan, I'm going too fast. I'm not even reading the chat. <laughs> OK. Um, I missed that great conversation. So please, take a minute, Shelly. Come to the mic. Uh, we have a question for you. Your newbie question is, what are listening tools, and how does recording my students' voice voices support their learning? So somebody's having fun at my expense. So yes, that's correct for the spelling. We know why, and it's a shell tarot. So the microphone's yours, Shelley. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, thank you, Mona, for that wonderful uh, introduction there. And thank you so much for those of you who have joined us and are spending your Saturday uh, with us, whether it be in the morning, um, which it is for me, because today I happen to be home, uh, which I'm very excited about, and um, uh, or if it happens to be the afternoon or the evening for you. Um, like I know we have some people from Morocco, so. So thank you so much for being here, um, and thank you. We have some quite a few elite in our audience, so I'm very flattered. Like um, Nancy Blair and and Shambu's Guru, so um, I'm sure Shambu's going to share some of his great stuff with you. Uh, and so be sure that if you're following along in the chat box, that you click on those links as well. So one of the questions that was asked earlier, and which definitely means you're in the right place, is what are considered listening tools, and how does recording my students' voices support their learning? I'm an English language teacher, so this seems to be one of those things that is part of the curriculum. Uh, but just in general, I've taught general education as well. And listening tools are basically any type of tools where the audio is the focus. So you're recording the student's thoughts, you're recording their ideas, and they're allowed to share. Um, sometimes you can have a response system back, which is, if you have that, that's, that's really wonderful. Um, and so it's anything where your voice is recorded, it can even be a video, and that we as teachers teachers take that particular recording and we listen to our students, whether it be that they're giving us something simple like an answer or they might be doing something much longer like a podcast which sometimes can last 30 minutes to an hour and they talk about um, different types of topics. Now when you record your students' voices, one of the ways that that really supports learning is if you're a language teacher, that's really very helpful. But even if you're not, I think it's very, very, very important that you record your students' voices because I'm a big, firm believer in that our learners, um, the way we empower them, we get them to think, is they have to be able to voice their opinions. And it is not until they voice their opinions and um, replies that they're able, we're able to go back and we're able to respond to it and create a dialogue. And I think a lot of times in education systems worldwide, we don't allow the opportunity where students get to tell us what they're thinking and then we don't get to guide that. So that's why it's very important that we record our students' voices and, and, and try to understand what from their point of view. So I hope that I've helped with that. And if uh, Peggy or Lorna or anybody else has uh, more to add to that, uh, you're more than welcome to be. And hi, Paula. It's great to see you here. And should I just go on to the next slide? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sure 
<laughs> yes, please, Shelly, go ahead. Uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> well, we're going to go ahead and begin, and uh, now you can really see what uh, different listening tools are out there. When we teach with listening tools and app, part of effective listening is that the student has to be part of this as well. So we can take it beyond just the teacher and student relationship, and we can make it go towards student-student relationship. Now, when you start school classes and school years this semester, you're really going to be able to tell yourself, um, it, have that opportunity to nourish whether you're going to be the environment where students get to voice their opinions and they get to hear feedback from it. And we have to create a very healthy environment for that, where students feel like they can share. Uh, I love this quote by Larry King, and he says, I remind myself every morning, nothing I say this day is going to teach me anything. So if, I ha if I'm going to learn, I have to do it by listening. I don't know if enough times we take the opportunity to listen because we get very, mind, um, we get very bogged down that we have to finish a curriculum, we have to implement new technology. I was with teachers in Indiana, and they had just all gotten Chromebooks, and I thought, wow, you know, these, these teachers, they have to deal with learning Chromebooks in, <laughs> in two or three weeks, and then they also have to deal with the Common Core, and I just thought, that can be very overwhelming with teachers, and I remember when I was overwhelmed, I always work about 60, 70 hours the first week that I began school, um, I have to remind myself, at the end of the day, the most important thing is that my students care, uh, um, at the end of the semester, my students realized that I cared for them, and I cared about their learning. Um, and that goes a lot long, that goes a very long way. So we can teach students active listening. This is definitely a skill that we do need to nourish in our students because they don't know how to actively listen. So even if you're doing a lot of lecturing, it's very good that you begin your classes teaching this because that way you can make sure that they are, in fact, getting the details that they need. Um, so I love this Chinese symbol of active listening, where it integrates the ear, the eyes, undivided attention, and the heart. So your students, uh, that's one part of it, is that they have to care about what they are listening to. They have to be invested, and that makes it where it's active listening. Um, and the same with you, so when we ask for feedback. Now, there are many different I'm going to tell you a lot of tools in a little bit, but there are also many, many tasks or activities you can do. So these are some of the ones that I've done. And under each of these, these types of tools, there are probably 50 other activities you can do with them. So for example, interviews. I'm going to show you lots of really fantastic interview apps. And right now, um, and tools, and by the way, all of these are free. I believe in sharing free stuff with teachers. So the ones that you'll see today are free. Now, um, I have them on different versions as well, but sometimes I have I have the app for the iPad, so maybe they have a version that you pay for on the um, on Android or something like that. So um, I'm sorry if that does occur. Or sometimes if you're in another state um, or country, if, I mean, if you're in another country, maybe they won't be free. But for the most part, these have been shown to be free. So interviews, there's so many different types of interviews you can do. You can do where students write the questions and then they prepare good, thoughtful questions and they decide someone they want it interview. But even as a first day activity, it doesn't even have to be someone in, someone that's in a high career or anything like that. What they can do is they can interview each other and they can get to know each other. Um, you can always have it to where my high school students, I would have them interview students from other classes. So th there's so many ways that you can have an interview. You can have a complete podcast, and that's the next one, a podcast. A podcast is an, a recording of audio that has, it's a series of recordings of audio. And the way that you can listen to this is you have something that's called an RSS feed. So people can subscribe to your audio that you have 
uh, continuously. This is a great way for students to be able to, it, it, this is one way and one of those things that you can have going every single week in the class. And what I usually do is I set up a calendar, and each week I already have um, students, two students, and those are the ones in charge of the podcast for that week. They get to decide what the episode is about. I give them a list of bullet points of things to have. For example, class announcements, what is the weather. They're going to have to do that. They're going to sometimes have to interview someone within the school about something going on in the school. So these are different things that you can have as part of your podcast. Um, they can come up with a news item, a debate issue. For young learners, if you work with kids, and I've worked with kids as young as two years old, I usually have them share their favorite songs. They can sing a finger play. They can do a game of the day, um, an actual play outside game of the day, or a video game. They, can, they like to share things like that. They do reviews. So there's so many things you can do with a podcast. And they can do an interview um, as well. You can do interviews where this, a lot of times we can, our students can interview um, and meet people from all over the world. So a lot of classes are doing these mystery interviews. And I think Paula um, might know a little bit about this, where they have mystery Skype sessions and things like that. You can do role plays. You can have your recording students. This is great for any subject. So I've taught um, various subjects with ESL, about 18. And one of the things you, you can do is you can have your students, you can put them in situations and then they have to role play a conversation and you record it. And then you can have it for playback later. They can do newscasts. They can review books that they love, um, game video games that they love. Maybe they have fun TV shows that they love, things that would be interesting to them. They can have debates reflections. They can do audio guides. So if there's a favorite place, a lot of times I do this with QR codes now. I know that Shambos Guru um, that um, has a lot on QR codes. And, and these days we do a lot of QR coded audio guides where they can scan a QR code and then they can learn how to do something about um, how they can learn about that particular section of the school. So you can have them give audio guides to the school. Oh, this is the library. This is this section of the library, the mystery section. Did you know that we have a famous writer and there's a mystery series on, you know, and they can do things like that. So you can get them to explore and, and find out different great places even around the school. You can do that with um, where they have audio guides for learning stations. So if you have learning stations set up, then you can go ahead and you can record them, um, tell you about the learning station. You need to check out this and this. So there's different things you can do with that. Announcements where they're always saying the great news. You can help them do digital stories storytelling, create a radio show, and something that's called a learning log or audio journal. Now, um, one of my friends, Carol Goody, has recently, just the other day she posted on um, Facebook, her learning log research. So that's something you can go back and you can check on later. Now, let's get into the tools. I'm going to show you some tools you've probably heard of, and other tools I'll bring in and their tools that I just recently found out about them. So I, I think maybe they'll be new to you too. But I had to throw in my favorites because when you're learning about integrating technology and you're learning about having where you can have um, different technologies and choosing, there are still some technologies that I learned about when I first got on Twitter four years ago that I still think are the best tools, even with all the one uh, with the wonderful apps that there are out there. Uh, so this is one of my favorites. That's one of those all-time favorites, which is Go Animate, and it is a video. But the great thing about it is it disguises your students because it's not showing their faces. They choose a character, and then after they choose a character, they put in their dialogue. So it's a great listening tool because it focuses on dialogue. Now, they can either use their own voice, or they can use an actor's voice. And it's a dialogue between each other. So they do have to, they do have to um, communicate with somebody else, which is a 
which is promoting effective listening there. So you work, you have them get into pairs, and then they work together, and you can either give them a situation. Sometimes I, I have a non-tech idea I do that I still like to do with my students, is I put a lot of slips of papers inside a, a, a bag, and they grab one out. Um, these are situations, and I use these situations every single time that I'm um, teaching, I can use them again and again and again. So they grab their situation and then that's what they're making their go animate about. So they have the different dialogues, they work in pairs, they, they figure out how they negotiate what their conversation is going to be and then they can do it. It's great for history, they have a lot of historical characters. So one of my favorite activities is to also tell students, okay, I know you're bored, we're listening to this, so one of the things you can do is go ahead and um, modernize the conversation. Let's say that Abraham Lincoln was here right now and he had to do a debate with Lincoln now. How would that conversation go? How would that debate go? Modernize it. How would um, a conversation back in Shakespeare's time go, modernize it. And the great thing about Go Animate is they can add different props so they can um, really get that, they can contextualize what they're talking about. And that's one of the things that we got to get our students to do. We got to get them to visualize, to pretend they are there, to put them inside that particular time. This is Blabberize, one of my favorite tools of all time. Um, they, the students will love it. They will upload their pictures and then and, or they can find a Creative Commons animal picture or thing like that. And then they animate the mouse. They basically draw a little circle. They get to click on these green and blue dots to make it really look nice. And then it just talks in a funny voice. It's so funny. It's really um, incredible. It's so easy to use. But one of the reasons why I like that particular tool is because you can have students, um, I have them draw their fingers. We do finger plays for the young learners, the kids that I've taught. And then we make their fingers talk. So we've done that with where is Thumbkin? And then you can see the thumb and the fingers uh, um, talking at, while they're singing. Where is Thumbkin? So it's funny. They love it. Um, Vokey continues to be one of my favorite tools. It gets better each time. Uh, Vokey is where they can choose a character. They can even choose historical ones. Now, some of the stuff you you have to get a teacher's account in order to be able to really um, get all the characters and stuff. Then you can have, maybe somebody else knows that. Um, Patty asked a very good question. Does Vokey work on the iPad? I've never tried it. But there are, is something that's similar to Vokey. I'll call it Telegami. That is free, and that does work on the iPad. So you can create animated characters. I don't think you can create animals with it, though, but you can create animated characters. It's sort of like extra normal. Um, so it's great because the students, they get a little, um, they can either use their text. You can no longer use phone, so that's not an option anymore. But you can you can pre-record audio. So if you're in a low-tech situation, let's say you only have one computer in the classroom, and it's your computer, and you're the one who has to upload these, because this has always been my situation. I never worked in a one-to-one -one school. I've always worked in schools where I had to bring in the technology. All the technology that is there tends to be mine. Or um, if we have other technologies, because I begged for it, <laughs> which means that that another teacher was throwing out their old box computer, and I said, please let me have your box computer. <laughs> so these are low-tech ideas as well. You can choose backgrounds. So it really helps. One thing you may not know about Vokey is that your students can make drawings of the backgrounds, and then they can upload those, and that can be their background. So you, any opportunity that I get to put the children's the students mark on it, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that I incorporate a lot of their um, recordings because a lot of times when we do podcasts, they will provide the sound effects. For example, they may whistle. We'll find somebody in the class who whistles. Maybe we need the wind and they'll make the wind sound like But it, we can have a lot of fun doing things like that. Um, a lot of times when we do the radio shows, one of my favorite things to do is to actually get the students to go and, you know, bang on, on, on different things to make the sound of whatever it is that we're, we're trying to show in the uh, radio show. 
interview is a new tool. That might be something that you haven't heard of. Um, so interview is something that where it makes it makes interviewing something quite easy. So it's a free web tool where you compose a list of questions and then you can send this out this request to anyone and they can record their response via video. The thing about interview, it's free, it's it's just it's a new type of tool out there, but it doesn't allow you at the moment to put it on YouTube. But you can download the MP4 video. You can send this to a range of people so you can get a response from just more than one person as well. The next one we have I think is a lot of fun that I just found out about uh, from my very Checky boyfriend who who kind of teaches me a lot of these things as well, and um, uh, he's great to follow too at Duncan Bilingual, and he taught showed me this wonderful gem, which is Google does an experiment, and what Google did was they went ahead and they took old film, um, silent film, and the students they have to when they it records their voice. And it puts it as text. So it's a speech to text tool. And it adds their subtitles. Now, you might say, well, why wouldn't they just type in their subtitle? Well, the reason why, so you can, you can add your own kind of um, subtitles and expressions for, for one of these old silent films. So it's a lot of fun for the kids. Try it out. It's so much fun. But one of the reasons why it's great to have it with your voice is because that way these students can see that they're, pronoun they're enunciating or they're pronouncing things right. Um, and that way they know that their speech, even, even if you're, you're teaching, for example, I've taught debate and speech, a lot of our students don't realize they're not enunciating. So this is a good time for them to create conversations and they have to do it with their voice. The PBS Fridge Magnet Game is really wonderful. I just recently learned about this from um, uh, from one of the teachers in the 30 Goals, and um, it's it, what I love about it is I love fridge magnets. One thing, but this one goes a step and beyond. It adds students context clues. So if you actually go to PBS and you if you go to the link and you just take the core of the link, you're going to find over 75 free activities and games like this to improve reading and literacy for students. Uh, I believe it's K through um, fifth grade, so so young learners to about uh, 12 years old. Then the students replace words from an alternate word poem. That makes sense, so they use the context clues. And then the whole entire sentence is read out loud to them, and it's read to them with another kid's voice, which I really love. So they can hear these read out aloud to them as well. My one of my all-time favorite tools that I learned about. This is one of the first listening tools I ever learned about, which is Bookaroo. And Bookaroo.com is one of the easiest ways, and still is, to record audio. So you email and you save recordings, and basically you get these little kind of icons, and you can, um, you can. I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of tools out there. I had to limit this. There's literally hundreds I could have done. <laughs> um, so you can have two tools. One of them is this tool on the top, and when they click that, then they can uh, go and they, and they can they can record. So you click and they they just simply you can put this on your website. You can use this in a wiki. It does expire after a while. So you do need to watch out for that. So something that I've used like three or four years ago no longer works. Um, but you can go back and forth and leave video messages. So they can record. You can have them record the answers to assignments and things like that. Um, you can also have them uh, just send messages to each other. They can even put this in their own blog, and they can ask a question every day and have people go and record. Now, after they, you might say, well, if everybody clicks on this, then how, how uh, does it record over them? No, it does allow you edit. That's one thing to, um, to, to note there. But one of the things that they can do is when they, um, 
when they record, they it asks for their email and other information, so it makes it a separate recording. So you don't you don't have to worry about that. Now, one of the things here is um, that I really love about Bookaroo is there's no registration. So a lot of these free tools, they're free because you have to register. And uh, every once in a while, I want to do something with my students where I don't have to spend that extra 10 minutes going through the whole registration process. And some of them say, teacher, I can't even get in, or it's not taking it, or the captain doesn't work. So that's why I love Vokuru for those kind of activities as well. Voice thread. Voice thread is, again, one of my favorites. Um, tools to use. They have a free iPad app that I, that came out this year, um, and you can uh, students can doodle, which I think is just fantastic because it's great for feedback. I use this with adult students. I use it with teenagers. I use it for young learners. I see I'm four years old, so it's one of those tools that just kind of um, is for every class, every subject. You can use this for math. You can use it for science. You can because you can upload whatever it is in the middle. You get to decide, or the students get to decide what they're going to have in the middle. And when they do that, um, so you can have it in the middle here. Now it has a doodling tool, just like I'm doodling here. You can do that with VoiceThread. So let's say, for example, um, let's say here that this teacher is telling me that she wants, uh, she really likes, I put congratulations, yeah, I've learned so much in a few days, and this is one of the workshops I did in Israel, um, and I asked for their feedback, which was your favorite workshop and why. So they took the dueling tool, and they circled it when it was their time to respond, and they said, this was my favorite and why. So it, it's very easy, um, it's a great tool. You can do so many different things. In fact, there is one of those inspiring, um, the interesting way series, and it says 101 ways to use voice thread. <laughs> so you find a lot of these. Um, so here are a few ideas with some of the tools that I've shared thus far. That so we can think about the activities and things you can do with that. So one of them is you can use Voki. Uh, I mean, you can use voice thread for peer editing. You can actually have students volunteer, and at this particular time when they do the peer editing, I don't grade them. So when they're um, editing, and this is just for a time for them to correct everything, they can upload their papers, and this is an optional service. I tell them, okay, if you want to, then your students can go, and anytime they want, they can, they can, you can embed um, VoiceThread anywhere. So anytime they want, and if you use iPads, and they can use the free iPad app, they can go, and their peers can offer them feedback to make their their um, their movie, even they can they can even offer feedback on the movie. Their feedback, their poetry, their um, essays, so many different things. Their scripts. Uh, you can post book and movie reviews. You can say, uh, you can debate an issue. You can create collaborative stories. That's what I do with my four-year-olds. It's great. I use VoiceThread to create a digital story with uh, students in in Turkey. So my students were in Germany, and then um, we collaborated with on an animal story with six-year-olds in um, in. Istanbul. So that was that's very exciting for them. And they got to upload their own drawings and they also got to see uh, follow one after the other the sequencing of this story. They can do uh, choose your own adventures, you can share custom and traditions, you can share poems, quotes, jokes. Jo these are great for international projects as well because it's not um, it's one of those tools where you don't have to be in real time. You can show it, you can send it to them and they can still add their comments and feedback and not even be that. Now the next types of audio tools that I I'm suggesting are not, okay, so the audio tools that I suggested before would work in all kinds of subjects, but these I particularly feel are very good for and made for language learners. Uh, so one of the favorites is, so if you do have a diversified instruction in Texas, it's different um, than when I was teaching in Germany and, and Greece and some other places because in those at those places um, a lot of times students will go and they will take language classes so you have nothing but language classes um, language students but in the U.S. a lot of times 
they're going to have language learners in your classes. So you will have to teach, for example, I taught history with language learners. Uh, I've taught math with language learners. So, there, so if that's the case, these are some websites that you can send them to. I put them in a the wiki. I have two wikis. And I don't know if I put those up. The one is, um, um, well, I'll, I'll put those later. So one is my English story time, and then there's one that I use with adults called DAWs. And that one you can even see Vokies on actually both of them, <laughs> so I love it. Um, but these are their favorite websites that they will go to. So I have this sort of like a flip class in a way, but also as motivation. I tell my students, okay, here's a list of places you can travel, I mean places where you can practice more. And you get to choose. You get to choose a game or you get to choose um, this and that. And one of them is lyrics training. This is one of the most popular ones. So lyrics training is basically, and so your teenagers will love this as well. You teach teens. Um, and then you can do writing exercises with this as well. Follow up. Uh, did you like the lyrics? Now that you really paid attention to the lyrics, and you know what was your reflections on this? So there's so many different things that you can you can use um, with this. But I I really enjoy lyrics training too, and students love it. They just absolutely that's one of their favorite tools. They continue to say all around, um, and it tells you how to play and everything like that. Another is tune into English. So uh, one of my really good friends um, who I've never met in person, but she's in Argentina, and her name is Greta Sandler. And every Friday they used to have her, her fifth graders in Argentina, they would have karaoke Fridays. And these students, I used to think, oh, there's no way that students are going to want to share their voice or sing or anything like that. I am wrong. Um, uh, Greta students love singing. They would invite other people to come, and they would do a lot of different. Um, and they would have a lot of different karaoke competitions and things like that. So teen teenagers all over the world uh, tend to love karaoke, and this is a great way to learn with karaoke. And this is tuneintoenglish.com. <laughs> uh, Box of Pop. Now, Box of Pop you can use um, to spur debate in any type of class. So, for example, if you teach history, then you can uh, put debates in. Bossapop.com is basically a talk group, the whole entire um, place. And, and somebody told me, you know, they said, did you add audio boo? I said, no, I, I forgot to add audio boo. But even with audio boo, I find that I use it less and less and less because I use other tools like this. And um, I'm not saying that audio boo is not a good tool because, it, in fact, it is. It's a very good uh, tool. Um, but Box of Pops, they have talk groups. And a lot of times the students, um, especially language learners, will find a large community of other speakers to interact with. And a lot of times I realize as a teacher, I can't be the only one offering feedback. I can't be the only one who is in a conversation with my students and in a dialogue. But this is something that's very important for active listening. So it's important that we get our students to interact with others around the world and, and introduce them to communities that are educational, like Box the Pop. And they can have different types of uh, talk groups. They can even add their own talk group. They can add their own questions and things like that. Um, and it's very exciting when learners do this because they'll come in and they'll say, Teacher, teacher, I, you know, I had two people answer my question today about how, uh, you know, is it, what's your favorite vacation spot, or do you think Ryan Gosling is sexy, or you know, <laughs> whatever they use, I inspire. I tell them, okay, your mission is to go out and to, um, you know, create your own kind of question on these kind of talk groups. So that's something that you can do. You can ever relate to the subject, so you can you can definitely do it. Um, they can ask for math help. They can, I mean, there's so many things they can do. Dictation exercises are really fantastic to do on their own time. And this is my favorite one. It's from the English Club. But if they join the English Club, which is uh, free, it has over 70,000 users. My friend, Tara Benwell, another really good friend of mine, um, that I have met, um, is an excellent moderator of this. She has where they do chats, and they have a very intuitive chat system. If you've used the one in class 20, then you can tell where you can chat back and forth. But theirs also has video. Theirs has audio. 
audio so you can and there's always somebody on it's a great way to learn English too because you have over 70,000 people you're more than likely to run into someone <laughs> and they're going to be very active they um, they have different chat topics on poetry they have on video games they have it on what was the last what did you feel about the last Twilight so they have very relevant things but one of the things that they have is these short dictation exercises and you have different levels but basically the way it is and the way it works is you click A which is right here and you're going to list in a normal speed uh, a conversation now you choose there's a list of them and then uh, what you do is you just listen and then on B you listen again at a slower speed and on C this is where you're typing in you have to type there um, what you're typing in is something like you know this is um, whatever the conversation is. So this is where I would type. Ah, yeah, where is that? And I might say, hi, George, because that's what I heard in the conversation. Um, how are you? And so it's a really great tool. And then in the end, you click on it to show, and it plays it again, and then you can make corrections. So it's a really great way if you have language learners for them to um, practice at home. EnglishCentral.com, another really fantastic tool. You will be amazed. Um, you will be absolutely amazed about English Central. I didn't even know technology like this could exist. And this is before they had the iPad. This was before they had all these great apps. But English Central, one of the things that they do is that they make it to where your students will record their voice over a popular YouTube video or CNN video or that's what they do, okay? And when they say the words, it records it, and then it grades their pronunciation. They say, ah, oh, you didn't, and it's so funny because one of my, uh, um, Russell Stanners, um, and then the, a person that I've met who I adore um, does this teacher training videos, and, he, and during the training videos, he has a very strong accent from, um, I forgot what part of England he's from, he might be from Birmingham, and he rates a C, they gave him a C, and he's a native English speaker, so it's really funny to see his teacher turning the heel on it. Um, it's, you record your voice, and it, it'll tell you whether you're pronouncing things right, uh, it's wonderful. There's a fun little game, it's um, by audiopuzzler.com and what you do is there's these little types of noise. They're sound bites, okay? So you get this sound bite and what you want to do with the sound bite is ah, here we go. So here we go. We have this little sound bite and you hear this sound bite so you just click on a bunch of sound bites and then you can even type in the audio and stuff and you have to match them together. You have to see which comes after the other, and it's all through sound. This is very difficult, even for me. So you it gives you the instruction here. Um, you can repeat the audio. You can confirm the text, and then you put it all together. You drag and drop to assemble the listening pieces. Now, this is um, like uh, from where you can choose. You choose from basically it, they take in the audio from YouTube videos. So you have the eight rows of Fight Club. That one. So there's a lot of different ones that you can have them. Um, this may not necessarily always be appropriate for young learners and kids. So uh, if you're going to use this, then you'd probably be with um, with adults and, and teens and college students maybe. Um, Elo. Elo is the largest network for listening. Um, you get listening samples. So every once in a while we just need a listening sample, whether it's for podcasts, whether it's to assess um, a particular grammar point, or maybe we want to highlight um, a, a some kind of phenomenon we're talking about here. We're talking, you know, the season. So you're teaching the season, you can do that. The great thing is they have videos, they have classes, they have scenes, they have thousands and thousands of sound bites. And one of the things that you can do is you can you there you can play with it. That's what's wonderful about it. Is that you can have a transcript, you can play with the transcript, you can manipulate it, you have activities with that. You can click on any of these speakers and they say the audio. So you can hear different types of accents. And it's very, very important that that happens with our students. Um, and one of the reasons why, especially our native speakers, is there's an interesting statistic out there and I think it says uh, from David Crystal that four million people speak English um, as their first language 
language. But it's like a billion that speak it as their second language or third language. So in other words, the majority of speakers in the world happen to be from other countries. So we have to get used to those accents. Uh, Randall's ESL Listening Club, he has tons of different types of podcasts and listening sound bites. And he, one of the things that Randall is very famous for is these listening bites aren't practice. These are real listening bites from people where it was just recorded. So that helps quite a bit. He has phone casts, he has media players, he has um, different types of um, tips for teachers, vocabulary quizzes, and they're all audio. Many things that, or the reason why I like this one is because it's another game. So one of the things you do is you can listen, and this is really hard for learners to do the difference between bit, bite, boot. When I was growing up, um, even though I grew up in the U.S., one of the things that I struggled with, I, w I actually learned Chicano English, so I didn't uh, speak proper English. And when I, t um, um, in my neighborhood, we didn't realize that. But then my father moved me in the first grade to another school. And <laughs> this is a very good school in our um, in, in San Antonio. And I quickly found out that I didn't speak proper English. And so it was it was, it was these little things that I would have to um, I would have to practice bit, bite, boot, bot, but, bait. And so you start the new game, and this makes it, I remember back then it was really hard for me, and I really struggled with that. But now you have so many great listening tools out there. You have, like, this matching game. So if I would have something like this, then I would have, I would have really enjoyed doing that <laughs> to make it, yeah, because a lot of times it's so stressful for your students. And if they have speech impediments and they really have to practice these kind of things, this makes it to where they don't feel, I remember, I I used to feel very dumb and um, I, I used to uh, feel very insecure about these kind of things. But when you're playing the game, uh, <laughs> all of that goes out the window. So there's something you can do. Listenandwrite.com. This is pretty good because you fill in the blanks. Um, you have different types of 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 scripts and stuff, and they come from TV, so like Desperate Housewives <laughs> and things like that. You have a full mode where you can type the whole letter of a word, um, the first letter of any word, or blank mode. So they can choose to do this how they want. Listenaminute.com, one of my really good friends, which is Sean Banfield, has literally thousands. He does this, BreakingNewsEnglish.com. You'll see Sean Banfield's stuff, and he's at Sean Banfield on Twitter. And one of the great things about Sean Banfield is every single day he comes up with a new lesson plan. And I mean a complete lesson plan. You have so many options. Not only does with his listening, he comes up, also he has breakingnewsenglish.com, but breaking news is basically he takes the, any of the news of the day. A lot of times you can even tweet Sean and you can say, hey, I want it on this news item. So if you don't see the news item up there, then you can ask Sean and he'll do it for you. And it's all free. So he, you have the MP3 that plays. Then you have a quiz. And these are interactive quizzes. You can play Hangman. You can do a word scramble. You can do, I mean, there's so many great games that you can do out there on his site. He gives you a PDF. It's usually 16 pages, this PDF. And it's a lesson plan. So if you're one of those teachers like me where you sometimes want to, um, you know, you want to use somebody else's lesson plan, this is a great way to do it. He's, you, not only does he give you tech stuff that you can do with it, but he also gives you different types of walking around activities. So Sean is a very good teacher. Um, n no. Uh, well, listen a minute is, but breaking news English I've used with um, 13 year olds and stuff before. So breaking news English wouldn't be, and he has another one called Lisa that's um, ESL holidays, and that one's pretty good as well for young learners. He has different co conversations, um, and then you can uh, with the, you can do something like he has a bunch of these surveys where students go around and they actually survey other students, so they practice speaking as well. You just have to check it out. It's so much stuff. Now I'm going to get into my cool app, and then we're going to wrap up. One, there's so many apps up there, and one of the great things, I love my iPad. I take it all my classes, and that's how we use the iPad. It, it, it would need to great apps and stuff within, um, as 
listening tools, we only have one iPad, or we only have, a lot of times we'll have the student's phone. So I work in a lot of situations that where it's bring your own technology, even with kids. I was doing this in Croatia and um, in Slovenia recently, and students have these technologies. So if you allow them to use it, it's a great way to get them to start recording their voices. And that's one of the options and, and features of mobile devices that very few teachers take advantage of because you don't have to have a fancy cell phone. You can simply just have one. And you don't even need the internet for that. And you have all of these wonderful tools at your hands. One of the great ones that I love is sock puppets. All my students love this. When I'm teaching four-year-olds all the way up to doing, I use this for teacher training too, as Nancy's pointing out there, um, they just love it. Um, and one of the great things is if you download it, then you can do this offline as well. You won't, after you're downloading the app, you don't need an internet connection to take advantage of this great app. So you choose the different talks, and then you choose backgrounds, so you can contextualize, and then you go at it. You can sing, you can rap, that's what all I love to do. You can create a soap opera drama. Um, there's so many different things you can do. The great thing about sock puppets is that it, those students don't tell them that it changes their voice. Because I realize when they start having a puppet, then all of a sudden they start um, they start making funny voices with it. So it's really funny when you start hearing that it already has a funny voice. Um, Voicey, but Voicey is an iOS app. They're having all these wonderful apps now. It allows you to record voice messages back and forth. So you can record it offline. It updates when it's connected. This is really good for discussion. So your students, they can connect with each other, and it's a good collaboration tool for them. They can do voice messages. You can do this as a group. You can set up a group, class one, and they all leave voice messages to each other. Um, and that's, uh, you can have questions back and forth. You want students to take notes in your class. This is a great one to do this with. This is Recordium, uh, which is a brand new app that has come out. Um, it's free. You can highlight parts in your audio. So you can highlight them and make notes within the audio. How cool is that? You can add and toy, annotate points for future reference. So let's say your, your students are hearing a lecture. They're not from you, but you know from other teachers are going to lecture them, then this is a great app so they can say, ooh, at this point, M Mr. Bob um, talks about animals that are herbivores. Or, you know, so they get to actually make notes um, and they can type out those notes while Mr. Bob is talking. So they'll love you for doing that. You can edit the audio as you go as well. So it's a very smart um, listening app. At patio.com, one of the easiest ways to have a podcast. You don't even need to have an app for it. You can record this by phone. It's called a phone cast. So you can broadcast, record, playback, and share audio up to 60 minutes. Um, you can have four photos. So if you want something that's a low-tech option, you want something that's going to be versatile and everything, I leave this in the station. So when my students, whoever the two are that are in charge for that week, they can just go grab my iPad. They can record their phone cast really fast, um, and then it's over with. No hassle, no fuss. They can get together and they can get it done. <laughs> um, Educreations. Educreations is where you can create a nine-minute video. Educreations is free. One of my favorite things about it is if you go to educreations.com, it will give you a free classroom. So when your students do record, it captures their screens. They can upload text. They can upload. Um, they can take a picture of the textbook, which is what we do sometimes, because we do have to use textbooks. Um, and then they can write all over it. They can take notes of an actual picture in their textbook. And so they can record videos of it, of what they're talking about. So it's really wonderful. And then it automatically goes to your free classroom. When they finish the video, it automatically sends to your classroom. So you have it right there. It makes it easy to discuss and see their videos. Talking then in News Reporter, you record just simply any kind of video, um, a very short video clip, just like you would if you're a newscaster. And with your phone, 
or your uh, mobile device, and he plays it right here in the middle. And Tom and Ben um, wisecrack each other and play around with each other in it. It's a great, fun app uh, to report the news. And you can make news about anything. Bed, Bunsell, a bedtime app, is made for parents to read to children, but you can use this with students. So they read a popular story, they send it to a young learner. So I've done this where high school students will send it to, um, uh, will get together and work with a class, a younger class. And then they hear it, and then that, that child has to respond with their own video narration. So it's this feedback. It's going back and forth, creating dialogues and listening to each other. There's wonderful things you can do with quick response barcodes. That's what it looks like. Um, one of the reasons, you know, one of the ways that I do it a lot is by adding an audio comment. So you can attach these to MP3s. I mean, you can attach an audio comment, um, okay, to do this. So there's two ways. You can either attach it to listening. As soon as they scan it, they'll hear something. So a lot of times we'll put this around uh, different areas, and then if someone's giving a review, an audio review, or maybe, like, you can put these in books, and then it, it comes out, and then you can hear, ooh, if you like Twilight, you'll love Anne Rice's novel, Vampire, with Interview with a Vampire. Or you can, with SoundCloud, if you attach it to SoundCloud, they can actually record their voice. They can record a response to a question um, doing that all on their phone. So one of the ones, if you scan the last one, then you can add to mine, which was a sound clock on get, can you guess where I am? So I put a lot of noises in the background, and then you have to just, uh, get, figure out where I am. Um, you can do a lot of audio clips and things like that. You can use something called um, QR voice, and what you do is you type in, and then it automatically makes it an audio. So you don't necessarily have to record the audio yourself. This is a free service, by the way. You can create podcasts. There's different hundreds of things for that. And I'm sure with Classroom 20, there has been somebody who has talked about that. So uh, those were lots and lots of tools out there. Um, and uh, that's it. Uh, those are the ones that I named. There's plenty more. I discovered some yesterday, how to write songs and hear them curated. Um, and, and, you know, there's so many great options out there. And that, at the end, is a really good problem to have, that you have so many great free tools out there that students can use and that you can spur feedback. So I know you, you were probably overwhelmed, but what I always say is take one that really made you tick, one or two, that you said, oh my gosh, that is so cool. Get to learn that one, integrate it, and um, the rest, you know, if you want to, then you can go back and you can always use them. But just definitely one or two. And then you won't feel so overwhelmed. <laughs> Thank you so much. If you have any questions or anything, then. Um, oh, thank yeah. you, Shelly. We you're, really appreciate you, well, you being you. with That's us today. Right. And we are I'm going, wow, wow. We just couldn't keep up with all And Glenn, if you have anything about the you were sharing, uh, usually at this point, I let Lori take the questions. But now that they're at the top of the hour, I would like to finally close out the session. And then, if you don't mind, we take the questions afterwards. I did start taking a Demi course on it. And I was like, wow, they have so many questions. So, just a heads up for those of you who have to leave us today on Future of Education. We've got three good interviews coming up. Steve has Dave Marsh on self-designed education on Tuesday the 27th of August, then Michelle Cordy on hacking your classroom on September 3rd, and September 10th, uh, Doug Johnson on the indispensable librarian. I think that's and for our own idea. shows, uh, upcoming next weekend is our feature teacher Louise Morgan, and a heads up that we will not be having a show on Labor Day. And then you see a great list of people. Um, in the shoe ready for us. Uh, the 7th of September is Colleen King Math Playground. And we're pretty sure we have Adam Bellows the next week, but we're just holding off until we have final confirmation. There will be no show because of the Global STEM X conference. And then we'll be coming back with Zoe Middler for the future teacher. So that's a quick overview of uh, what's going on. We rem remind you about nominating your future teacher. You'll find that resource as well as the survey. If you can't get that link when we close up uh, in the live binder on the Classroom to Zero live resources, please go there to check on that. Because if you don't get the survey link, which we hope you do and you sell out, you might want to access the uh, professional development certificate. And a link to the survey is there, and a place for you to request that a survey be mailed to you, because Peggy faithfully does this every week. And she does ask that you use your own personal emails if you could, because we find sometimes when we're using an institution's email, it gets uh, it gets 
spam filtered, so it might not get it through to you. So that's just a heads up on that. And then the, we do have the iTunes U video and audio collections for you. Uh, our RSS feed you can find on the archives and resources page as well. So it is my um, extreme pleasure to thank you again, Shelley, for being with us today. To Steve, who is the founder of Classroom 2.0 and Teacher 2 and Future of Education and Web 2.0 Labs Project, for being our mentor and helping us with our uh, show. To Weebly for providing us uh, a platform for our website and uh, Blackboard Collaborate, of course, for our web conferencing today. And to all of you for being with us here on Saturday. So I'm going to turn it back to Lori and ask her, were there any questions that you collected during the session that you would like to ask Shelley? Yes, I did capture a few. Going all the way back to Blabberize, has Blabberize been stable recently? Somebody ran into a lot of rough edges with connectivity with it several months ago. One of the funny things about Blabberize is um, and in some days, you know, you use it and it, it just works wonderfully. And then there's other days when the mouse disappears all the time. So I, I haven't used it in the last week. So I wouldn't be able to give quite a, um, I, I wouldn't be able to say whether it has in the last week. I think about a week, of, um, two weeks ago, though, I did use it to, I like to make a lot of um, birthday cards with me and Roscoe. And Roscoe, mm -hmm. his little mouse singing. So it worked. It worked okay then when I used it. Okay. I'm not sure if this question had been ad addressed in the chat. What's the best way to help make students aware of these tools and decide which ones meet the needs of their project? Uh, that's a really good question. So earlier, Peggy was talking about symbol. Um, mm -hmm. And this is what I have in my wiki now. Um, I, I used to have just a list of the links. So I like to divide it. It's called a sandbox. And just like children play in the sandbox, that's what it's there to do. And um, if you do it with Symbolu, it's even better. So what you do is you take these apps, a uh, few of your favorites, and you have the ones that you've recommended. And what you can do is you just um, you say, this is your sandbox. And um, this is what these tools do. These are comic tools. These are, um, and you have a Symbolu for each one of them. And then they just click. and, and they and they can play with it. And each week, that's one of their tasks, their missions. I don't ever say it's homework, but I give them missions on the wiki. And I tell them, OK, so your mission. And every time that they do a mission, then they get points for it. So um, that's the other part is we, we have to motivate them to do that. Um, but they can see, um, oh, I love Pearl Trees. But similarly, for kids, it's more visual. They would rather just go and click and point at someone something and then they can try it out. Um, so that's the way what I would do is I would say, um, you put like a symbol up, you say this is the sandbox, click on any of them, um, and then you know you and a partner, you play with it. And, and just give them every single week a mission where they can, they can play with those tools. And um, that's what I've done. My students have uh, been very motivated and do it, even though they're not graded. And I think the other questions I captured actually were answered in the chat. So those are the only th only two that I had that were not. Thanks, Lori. So it, it's an opportunity. I know some people have to leave us right now. But if you do have a further question, just want to type it in the chat. And uh, Kelly will, Shelley will um, answer for you. And I can even show you, uh, I'll, I'll add my digital sandbox uh, for digital storytelling tools. So you can even copy mine. That's one thing that I, I, I like about um, Life Binders as well, is that you can copy your favorite Life Binder or even a Pearl Tree. I haven't, um, with Symbolo, you can kind of do the same thing. So a lot of times, like, a, and this is a shortcut. I know some people call it cheating, but the tool allows you to do it. So my symbol is now, what I do, because I just recently discovered you know, how great symbol is, um, and this idea of a sandbox I've always had, but this makes it even better. So I'll show you like my regular version of a sandbox, um, so you can see what I'm talking about on the wiki. Um, but then you can um, go and create it with Symbaloo, and it makes it so much better. But I actually don't make my own Symbaloo icons. I find somebody else that already did it, and then I, I, I right-click it, and I copy it to one of my 
as symbols. Uh, one of the reasons why is because then I don't have to upload the picture. They usually have a really great symbol icon for it. And so, and sometimes you'll find a bunch of them on one person. So it really saves me time. And if you're like me and you're always online, then that's one thing that you don't have is a lot of time. <laughs> and you're more than welcome to copy any of my. I encourage it. Please copy my. Uh, you can copy any of the stuff from the uh, from the, the reboot camp. Uh, I mean, my blog or in the wikis or anything like that. That's that's not a problem. <laughs> Thanks, Shell. I don't see any more questions coming up in the chat, so I am going to officially close out the show. Thank you, everyone, for being with us today, and, and most importantly, Shelley, for uh, the great presentation that you gave us today. We really appreciate it. So, thanks, everybody. We hope you have uh, the rest of a good Saturday. I hear it's hot some places in the world. It's kind of moderate here in, in St. Catharines, in Canada. It was actually very cold during the week, and night times are a little chilly. Blankets are appropriate. So. You've got a good day ahead. Have a good one. See you all next week. Thanks very much. Bye, everyone. Thank you for spending your weekend with me. Have a great, great weekend. And thank you, Peggy and Lorna and Lori, for um, being such excellent moderators and inviting me.